Time for your local athlete of the week. It's Jamel Lyles. Talk about explosive. This young kid has been playing unbelievable. He's a University One student, originally from Surrey, BC, now playing for the University of Manitoba Bisons. You see his stats there. In his first CIS game, he had a game-high 155 rushing yards on only 11 carries. Then a week later at home versus the Calgary Dinos, Lyles made the Bison faithful jump to their feet as he took the ball on the opening kickoff and raced down the field for a 107-yard kickoff return TD. He's 19 years old. Jamel Lyles, your local athlete of the week. Standing here with Mark Chipman, the executive chairman of True North Sports and Entertainment and also of the Winnipeg Jets. Mark, I have to believe that this is a lifelong dream of you to be on Sports Talk today. <laughs> yeah, we're just driving over here thinking, wow. <laughs> what a moment, right? What a moment this could be. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was such a scene last April uh, with the Winnipeg Jets made the playoffs for the first time in 19 years. How do you build off of that this season? How do you like the direction of your team? Well, I think it's been a work in progress for four years now, and uh, that was a good step forward for our organization and our group last spring. Uh, I think, you know, uh, it was gratifying in some respects, but in others, you know, I think a lot of us felt that, um, and most importantly, our players felt that, you know, we, we, we pro probably could have had a, a little bit longer run at it. So I know there's a lot of eagerness uh, amongst our entire group just to get back at it. Throughout that uh, playoff run and when you guys did clinch a playoff spot and you had those four games back in Winnipeg, the whiteout was huge, obviously. You guys had a ton of national coverage around the league, really, and even around the world. Do you guys feel that spotlight when that's actually happening? Yeah, I, I, I do. It makes me feel like uh, a fan more than anything. You know, I was, uh, I was a fan uh, many, many years ago when, when that whiteout got rolling. So I think we all, as just citizens of this community, take a sense of pride in it. And, uh, you know, I knew it was going to be, it would be amped up, but I had, you know, it was incredible. I, I don't think anybody fully expected how much energy there was going to be in the building. And, uh, you know, our players feed off of it for sure. Our organization feels a sense of responsibility for it as well. And uh, I think it just, it's, it's sort of, uh, uh, you know, it crystallizes the fact that our, this team belongs to our community and our fans are, are very, 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 very committed and passionate about, uh, about our place in the National Hockey League. For sure. Before that playoff appearance back in March, us here at Shaw TV did a story on Project 11, which is an education plan for youth in Manitoba being implemented in schools across the city and the province. Uh, how important are initiatives like that to your foundation? Well, they're, they're critical. I mean, there's so many good causes and there's so many ways that organizations like ourselves can, uh, can engage the community. That one had real particular meaning to us because of, uh, of Rick and, uh, you know, and the, and the struggles he had with... Uh, with depression and uh, and the ultimate loss of his life, so it was it was really an easy one for us to rally around. Craig Heisinger was very very uh, involved in Rick's life in the last in his last few years, and and so it was also a, a way we thought uh, to support uh, Zinger and and all of his efforts. Uh, and uh, you know, and it's unfortunately it's an illness that's still uh, stigmatized, and it ought not to be. And so, you know, if we can play a small role and and um, in bringing awareness to it and and, uh, and bringing some skills to kids uh, to help uh, navigate it, then it's something we're just very proud to be involved in. Absolutely. Uh, last question, out of curiosity, when the anthem is being sung at your home games, are you shouting True North? No, I don't. Uh, I'm up in the press box, so that wouldn't be. Uh, you got to be uh, professional. Yeah, it wouldn't be appropriate. Okay. But I tell you what, it, you know, it's a really cool story how it all started. Uh, you know, from one individual who is a real passionate fan and. I remember the first time I heard it, it was kind of faint yep. in the 300 level of the building and it built and built and, and uh, it never gets old. Like it makes the hair stand up on my arms every time I hear it. Something we sure don't take for granted and uh, uh, we're, you know, very, very honored by. Thank you very much for your time today, Mark. We my, appreciate it. My pleasure. Sports Talk is going to continue on. The golf season is wrapping up. Here's a story about custom fitting for your golf clubs. I would ask you to stand just where you are. Okay. If you were to put your hands straight down. For an iron fitting, which is what we're showing you today, your height and wrist to floor measurement are taken to calculate your lie angle. Plus grip of the club is also important. Perhaps you could use a little bit. Can you almost feel your fingertips digging in just a little bit? Yeah. 
Yes. You may be a candidate for a larger grip, perhaps a, a jumbo size grip, okay. oversized. There's three, four, or five different sizes of grips. Right. They can also be fine-tuned just by adding extra pieces of uh, two-way tape, grip tape underneath the grip. Which widens the club grip just enough for your hand. We then need to look at the golfer, see how his posture is, how his setup is. The entire process is really like an interview. Questions help the custom fitter identify your ball flight tendencies, your equipment specifications, your likes and dislikes about your current set of clubs. Even the most minor of adjustments can have a positive impact on your golf game. Now we have the head, and this is the one that most people are aware of, is the angle of the sole of the club versus the shaft, which is known as lie angle. What we want to achieve is this sole coming into the ground as square as possible. If this lie angle becomes too upright, in this case, maybe a little tough to see, the face starts pointing. Yeah, it's a bit off the ground, yep. Yeah. Now the face starts pointing way to the left of the target. Right. Conversely, if it comes in the other way, with the toe down into the ground, the face starts pointing to the right. And that's going to affect your posture and it's going to affect your swing. It's going to affect a lot of things in the ball flight. So what we would do here, so we put this little piece of lie tape on here. Right on the club like that. And our objective is to try and get our markings, which will show up once you get to take a little swing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You won't be judged on this in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> okay, so it sounded like you clipped the board a little bit, mm -hmm. which is good. Take a look at what, what the results are. Wow. Look at that. So look at the marking there. Right in the center of the club. Okay. So this is what we're looking for. So we would do that two or three times, maybe more. Yeah. If we see this happen repeatedly, we're good to go with the line. Yeah, consistency. Consistency yeah. is what we're after. If the marking on the tape wasn't in the center and more to the left or to the right, after analysis of posture and swing, subtle adjustments would be made in the loft and lie machine. We would just make adjustments by bending the actual hosel of the club. Oh, I see. Trying okay. to accomplish, get it to the number that we've determined in your case. You were really close to being the right. loft at the angle that was predetermined on your shot. Okay. Maybe you were one degree, doesn't sound like a lot, but it can make quite a difference. So you're perhaps one degree either way, we would just measure it up, bend that hosel to the way we want it. You know, for the amount of money you can spend on golf, getting custom-fitted golf clubs serves as an investment to your game. If you're going to spend the money, at least give yourself a chance to play your best. And that serves as good news and bad news for guys like me, because now if I get custom-fitted golf clubs and I take a bad shot, I know it's my swing and not the club. And that will do it for this edition of Sports Talk here on Shaw TV. My thanks to Daniel Perron, Dancing Gabe, Rick Forney, Carly Colpitz, Rich Thomas, Scott Staub from Caddy Shed, and of course, Mr. Mark Chipman. That is it. That is all. That's everything. Bye for now, everybody.